Hey guys and welcome. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2, and its connection with Parsvakanasana, the side angle pose, and Trikonasana, the triangle pose. Let's go. Okay, so what I want you to focus on here is finding a connection between your sitting bone and your heel, the center of your hip and the center of your knee and the center of your foot, okay? So as I find that connection from the center of my hip through the center of my knee and my foot down into the floor, there's then a sense that I, there's, as I push into the floor, there's a rebounding effect coming back up from the floor through the hip. Now the cue that's often used in these standing poses to keep the hip square or to the side, what that does is you can see it internally rotates my legs. So now that line of force is going like this and creating a kind of X out this direction. And then in here you can see collapsing through the arch of the foot through the ankle. So I've lost that connection with the floor. Now if I try to keep that hip back and then force that leg open, it's going to create more compression in the joints, okay? So what I want you to do is forget about that cue of keeping the hip square to the side and focus on this sitting bone to heel connection, lining the center of the hip, knee and foot. Okay, so when you're in a posture like Virabhadrasana, Warrior Two and you find that connection, you notice that this hip goes forward slightly. I'm not trying to pull it back, because if I pull it back, then you see my front leg goes forward, caves in. If I keep that hip back and then try to force this leg back, then I'm gonna to create too much compression in the hip. Okay, so I allow this hip to go forward. Find that connection between the center of the hip and the knee, and then that sets me up. I can create a counter rotation through the chest. Then if I go to Parsvakanasana, I hinge from the hip, come into position. Again, notice if I pull my hip back, what happens? It caves my front leg in, collapses the arch of the foot. If I try to keep it back and force this knee back, it's not gonna feel good. So actually what I wanna do is push the hip forward so that I can keep that connection. Then I can open the chest up toward the ceiling from there. And then that takes me straight to Trikonasana if I straighten the leg, okay? Now I know that in some traditions like Ashtanga, Trikonasana is not done with the legs in such a wide stance. It's much narrower, but you still keep the same idea, okay? So even with a narrower stance, I still think about finding that sitting bone to heel connection, okay? Even if my legs in a narrower stance, I'm not pulling the hip back. Again, because if I pull the hip back, I lose that connection. If I go forward and pull that hip back, what does it do? It pulls my chest forward. And then if I try to correct it by pulling the chest back, it ends up looking like this. So what I need to do is actually push the hip forward and then open the chest up toward the ceiling. Okay, and then there's your trikonasana, either grabbing the toe, more traditional, or whatever's your level, hand up the leg, or bend the knee if you need to. The most important point is keeping that connection for Parsvakanasana and also for Virabhadrasana. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you liked it, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends, and leave a comment below. Music